Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this short tutorial on how you can vlog. Well, I'm basically explaining you what you might need for taking video blogs. And of course, there are several ways on how to do it. Someone is doing it outside, the other one is doing it just inside, one is using a professional camera and the other one is using just someone's phone. But today I'm gonna show you what is important for all types of vlogging. What you need, what or what you might need, which camera is good for vlogging, what lens is good for vlogging, what kind of settings you might need for vlogging, what microphone do you need, what kind of selfie stick do you need, what tripod you might need, what kind of lightning you need for vlogging, how to get better audio using an external recorder. As you can see, this one here is a small, tiny, flexible tripod, which is just a bit bigger than my hand. You can bend all these legs around here and it uses a normal camera mount on top. This tripod can be used with this smartphone clamp here. This is also a flexible one. As you can see, you can put in bigger phones and you can turn this one also 90 degrees upside down. Don't worry, I will put all of these accessories in the video description below so you can check them out at your time. What you can do is you can attach the smartphone holder on top of the tripod. And basically, you grab your phone, put it inside, attach it to the smartphone clamp and off you go. You can already start vlogging with just that simple tool here, as you can see. What you can do to get better audio quality, as you can see, there is a hot shoe attached to the smartphone clamp and you can use an external microphone, which you can attach to the, sm uh, to the audio jack of your smartphone. If the audio quality is already enough for you using your smartphone, you can, of course, use a video light for instance, which you can also attach to the smartphone clamp if you're filming in a dark environment. Hi, I'm Daniel. It's my first vlog here on YouTube, filmed using the camera of my iPhone 8 Plus. That's the front camera of my iPhone, together with the smartphone clamp I was just showing you, together with the flexible tripod by a company called Yobi. Yeah, and that's the internal microphone of the iPhone and that's how it looks like if you vlog yourself. Well, the cool thing about this clamp is that you can flip your phone 90 degrees around and so you will be able to attach an external video light or an external microphone on top of the smartphone clamp still together with your iPhone. And I'm using an iPhone 8 Plus, by the way. Another cool thing which you might consider to get is a selfie stick. I mean, you can extend your own arms. This one here is one of my favorite ones because it has so many options. It has a really nice grip here at the side and you can attach it to another tripod if you want to. So this one here uses a mirror, which is easy because then you will see yourself if you have, for if you, for instance, film yourself using a GoPro, which doesn't have the screen in front. You can extend these arms. To about one and a half meters away. I hope you can see that. It's almost at the, at my wall over there. And you can use the same smartphone clamp, which I just showed you a couple seconds ago. As you can see, here's my GoPro Hero 7 attached to the same selfie stick. And that's what I meant by you might not be able to see yourself. And that's why it's handy to have that mirror up here. Again, GoPro with an external case for that GoPro to be able to attach the audio adapter to the GoPro to get better audio quality by using an external microphone attached to my GoPro Hero 7. 
As you might know, the GoPro Hero 7, so as the GoPro Hero 8, are both featuring a really nice image stabilizer. You don't see any shaking in your videos. And even if you have that huge kind of selfie stick here or telescope, you, would, you wouldn't see any shakering while you run, while you walk, while you jump or anything like that. You will be able to do great vlogs using a simple GoPro as seen, that's my Hero 7 Black. I can highly recommend that you get an external case for your GoPro, doesn't matter which one you have, can be a GoPro Hero 5, 6, 7 or 8. So you will be able to attach an external microphone or a video light to your GoPro. That is my favorite case for my GoPro Hero 7. As you can see, you have that little attachment on top where you will be able to use the audio adapter for your GoPro Hero 7. So at the side, as you can see, you have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack next to it, um, USB-C port, where you will be able to charge the GoPro at the same time while you're using it. And as simple as that, just attach the GoPro to that selfie stick and you can start vlogging. Just make sure to get the audio adapter as well. And then we come to the next question. What type of microphone do you need for your video blocks? Well, I would say, first of all, any type of external microphone, which starts around at about 30, 40, 50 bucks, is well suitable to get you a better audio quality than your GoPro does. Here's an example. That is my Rode VideoMic Pro. It runs with an external battery and it lasts for about 100 hours of usage. What I usually do is the following. I switch it on. I have the high pass, I think it's called high pass filter or high key filter, one of them. And then I just switch it on and leave it to zero decibels. Plug it into the audio adapter and then as you can see, you do have a wide angle camera in a solid case. So if it falls off, your GoPro will not break. I don't know what it's about the microphone, but for sure your GoPro will last. So then you have the audio adapter attached to the GoPro case with an external microphone. Be aware that you need to change something first before you get better audio quality using your GoPro. Go to preferences, scroll down, input, output, and select audio input. Make sure you select the correct microphone, which is attached to the GoPro. It can either be a standard mic, which is a microphone, which is not running with a battery or a powered microphone, which in this case is a powered microphone since it has a battery inside it. So I need to select for now a powered microphone because otherwise your GoPro puts out a really scratchy, annoying sound. And that's because you didn't choose the correct microphone inside your preferences. Here's my GoPro Hero 7 Black on top of the Yobi Gorilla Pod. And at the moment I'm using the Rode Wireless Go. So a wireless external microphone in combination with the uh, GoPro uh, 3.5 millimeter adapter. And that's how it looks like 4K wide angle lens. That's how it looks like if I film myself vertically in 4K. Here's another example. That's the Rode VideoMic Micro for about 50 bucks. It's also a really nice microphone, which is small. It comes also with a dead cat, so winch or a windshield, which is not attached to the microphone at the moment. Just plug it in. And therefore, it, since it's not running with a battery, you need to scroll down, input, output, audio input, and select standard microphone to be able to use this microphone as your audio source. Close the preferences and then you can start vlogging yourself with a nice easy setup here as you can see. Wide angle camera, 
good microphone, cheap microphone, maybe a video light attached to the side since it does feature an extra hot shoe here at the side. And then you can start vlogging using your GoPro. Maybe you would highlight something using your own voice, but you're way too far away from your GoPro. It can be that you're at the other side of a mountain. Okay, not the other side of a mountain. Let's say you're about 100 meters or 200 feet away from your GoPro. And you would be in that frame, maybe a bit from further away, and you would still explain something to your audience. What I can highly recommend for doing so is to get the Rode Wireless Go, which is this one here. It's a small wireless microphone, which you can also attach to your GoPro. You can attach it either in this way to your shirt. Here's my GoPro Hero 7 Black on top of the Yobi Gorilla Pod. And at the moment I'm using the Rode Wireless Go. Or put it in your pocket and make use of the Rode Smart Love here, which, is, which I have here in my hands. So you can put the transmitter in your pocket, attach the Smart Love Plus to your shirt, and then you can do interviews from further away. The audio quality will still be the same in any case. Same camera, GoPro Hero 7 Black. Same microphone, but at the moment I'm using the Rode Smart Love in combination with the Rode Wireless Go. Since I'm using the Rode Smart Love in combination with the Rode Wireless Go, I'm filming myself now from about nine feet away from the camera and I still think that you get the same audio quality as seen in the previous clips. So attached to the GoPro, it looks like this. As you can see on top, you do have the receiver, which is attached with the red cable to the 3.5 millimeter audio adapter onto my GoPro. Since this microphone is powered using its own battery, you need to go into preferences, input, output, audio input, and select powered mic as your audio source. So these were a couple examples using your phone or a simple GoPro, which I can highly recommend. If you ever wanted to get a GoPro, start with a GoPro Hero 7. It's about 250 bucks at the moment. The GoPro Hero 7 will, no, the GoPro Hero 8 will cost you round about 300 to 350 bucks. And why I decided that the GoPro Hero 7 is the best GoPro for myself, since I can use all the cases, which I used on my previous GoPros, on the GoPro Hero 5 and Hero 6. I do have the GoPro Hero 7 Black Edition, because I have more choices about frame rates and the resolution. I decided myself that I need a GoPro Hero 7 since it does feature one of the best image stabilizers I'm aware of and it does feature Time Warp, which is um, a time-lapse movie while you walk and it's stabilized. Let's continue with cameras. Well, that here is a big camera. It's a mirrorless camera and that is my Sony Alpha 7 Three. It is a full frame camera which allows you to take awesome footage even during low light since it has really good low light capabilities. So what is required to do vlogging? Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily attach this camera onto a selfie stick because it gets quite heavy after a while and you don't know, maybe the selfie stick will break using this kind of weight here. But one important thing that you might consider once you are vlogging using um, a bigger camera, for instance, a DSLR, or in this case, a mirrorless camera to use a wide angle lens. That is my favorite wide angle lens here. It's my Zeiss Bartis 18 millimeter with an aperture of 2.8. So it is a fixed focal length. I won't be able to zoom in. However, I do have a lot of background included while I use this lens since it's an 18 millimeter lens. And it's good for low light since it does feature an aperture of f2.8. Another point which makes this lens so special. By the way, I did a large review about this lens last year where I had it with me for 10 days in Greece. 
it's an 18 millimeter lens with an aperture of 2.8 and still in the region of about 350 grams if I remember correctly which you can attach to a full frame camera and this combination is still under one kilogram which is awesome for that kind of combination you do have a full frame camera with a wide angle with a super wide angle lens with a fast aperture for this camera and this combination here with the lens and the camera i can highly recommend to get also an external microphone it can be a cheaper one like this rode video mic micro which you can easily attach to your camera make sure to balance the audio to around minus 6 to minus 12 decibels that is important using any mirrorless or dslr camera another setting here on my sony camera to be able to vlog myself is use afc so continuous autofocus the white balance depends a bit on you either it can be either cloudy or sunny or you set it to auto white balance this camera features a really good tracking system, face tracking, so as eye tracking, and therefore I use white as my focus field and the camera tries to keep me in focus at any time. Since this camera features 4K full frame, you can either decide if you would like to do your vlogs in 4K or 1080p with a higher frame rate. Maximum here on this one here is about 120 frames in NTSC or 100 frames in Paul or if you record yourself in 4k the maximum frame rate you would get 30 and in Paul 25. The aperture depends a bit on what you would like to show to your audience either that you're just in focus and the rest blurred out so open the aperture to about 2.8 or would you like to have everything in frame or maybe it's too bright outside use an aperture of f5.6 to about f8 and of course you can use this sony camera with all the microphones which i showed you in this video here make sure not to use the small selfie stick in combination with a bigger dslr or mirrorless camera since these flexible legs are not made for such heavy cameras what I can recommend instead is the following. So how about this one here? That's the bigger version. It does come with a ball head, which you can turn around 360 degrees. You can tilt your camera like you prefer. As you can see, I can rotate the camera in whatever position it's need to be for the type of filming I'm doing at this moment. You can bend the legs in the direction you want and you can vlog yourself using that big, heavy mirrorless camera. So it's not too heavy, it's not too big. However, it would also hold a Canon EOS 1DX or a Nikon D6. Here's the internal microphone of my Sony A7 III. In combination with the Zeiss Bartis 18mm f2.8 and I'm using the Yobi GorillaPod at the moment. Get an external microphone, attach it to the camera and start vlogging yourself. So here's my Sony Alpha 7 III in combination with my Zeiss Bartis 18mm f2.8. At the moment I'm filming with an aperture of f8, so the 4 as the background is in focus. And I'm using the Rode VideoMic Pro. And the mic levels are approximately at 16 at the moment. So the downside of this camera is that I don't see myself since I am not able to flip the display. If you're not convinced with one of these flexible tripods and you would like to get something which is more stable, I can highly recommend to get this one here. If I remember correctly, it's carbon and it does have a guarantee of about five to six years if you register it within one year. That's a really tiny one. It also features a ball head, which allows you to turn the camera in the direction you need it to be. It has a quick release plate, if someone's interested in that. And of course, if I turn the ball head into my direction, I can also use this as a vlogging stick using a bigger camera like the Sony a7 III or the Canon EOS R, which I'm filming at the moment. A downside of my Sony Alpha 7 III camera for vlogging is 
that as you can see, I can't flip the display 180 degrees around so I would be able to see myself. So I do need to rely on the angle of view which this lens offers. Well, in this case, it is an 18 millimeter lens. The face tracking, so as the eye tracking on this camera is brilliant. So I am relying on the out of focus capabilities using this camera. And of course, I'm relying on the angle of view which this lens offers. And how about then the ISO range? Make sure if you are flipping scenes, so if you go from the sun into shadows, from shadow into the sun and so on, make sure to use ISO set to auto. So the camera controls the ISO by itself. You can select the aperture and of course the shutter speed needs also to be selected by yourself. So let's assume you have an interview with someone and you are filming using a mirrorless camera like seen here, the Sony Alpha 7 III or your smartphone or your tablet, doesn't matter. And you would still like to get decent audio quality. Then make sure to get a handy recorder like this one. At the lower side, you have two XLR connections. So you can attach two XLR microphones to this recorder here. I will put a cheap version in the video description below by a company called Comica, which I've done a review about, I think like two or three weeks ago. Attach two microphones to this recorder here. And while you start recording the audio with this recorder, start recording also with your camera. Make sure to clap. And then you have two audio files. You do have the audio file from the camera recorded with the external microphone attached to the camera. And then you do have also another audio file, which is recorded by this Zoom Handy recorder. Later on in post-processing, you will select the video file recorded with either camera, doesn't matter which camera you used to record yourself or the interview. Then you will select also the audio file recorded with the Zoom Handy recorder. Use the right click, say clip synchronize, and then you have the video file with the audio file recorded using this Handy recorder here. Sometimes it is required that you are a little further away from your camera. Make sure to use one of these monopods. So it's not a tripod, three legs, it's a monopod, just one leg. You can extend this monopod, depends on the size of the monopod itself. Make sure to use a ball head attached to this monopod, otherwise you won't be able to turn the camera towards you. Well, if a monopod is the only device you have at your hand, then take it. I have now a ball head on top of my Canon EOS R. I'm filming in full HD with my Canon 24mm and the Rode VideoMic Pro. So do you see the difference? Same monopod, same settings, same lens, same camera, same microphone. But now I'm filming in 4K and you do need either long arms or a long monopod to get rid of that nasty crop factor. I mean, you never get rid of the crop factor. However, you can film yourself from a little further away. Here is now my Sony Alpha 7 III using the Rode VideoMic Micro together with the Zeiss 18mm f2.8. As I have mentioned earlier in this video, the downside is that I don't see myself at the moment. So I can either use an external monitor, which makes this entire com construction completely to a nonsense construction, since it gets way too heavy. So a solution for that is get another camera with a flip display like seen here. That is my Canon EOS R. Attached here is the Rode VideoMic Pro and I do have now a flip display where I can see myself. Downside of this camera here, it does feature 4K but it gives you that nasty crop factor of about 1.8. So I'm using here a 24 millimeter wide angle lens and all I get is something like a 35 millimeter which is way too close to vlog myself. If I would now record myself in 1080p 
it would make sense using a 24 millimeter. That's also a one with a fast aperture of f1.4. However, I wish Canon wouldn't have that nasty crop factor. If you're looking for a cheaper version of a vlogging case, this one here is a plastic case. So the audio adapter for the GoPro fits into it here. If you need to vlog yourself and you would like to attach a video light next to your GoPro, for instance, I have also this adapter here, which features two of these action mountings here, as you can see. So guys, that was my tutorial on how to vlog yourself or myself with all the accessories I have here at home. If you have any further questions on anything which I have shown in this video, please make sure to leave a comment below. I will link all of the accessories which I basically have here on my desk also in the video description below so you can scroll at home what kind of things you need for your video vlogs. I haven't showed you a video light which I would usually use to record myself using the GoPro or one of these bigger cameras here or the phone. I'll make sure to leave one in the video description below. I say thanks for watching, all the best from Frankfurt, Germany and tschüss!